in part 2 on CCA, we will look at some examples and um, go through the uh, useful properties of the cycle by cycle averaging. Next, let's briefly discuss about how we can actually um, implement or calculate CC of different quantities in simulation. So we use the basic definition of um, the CCA, x bar of t is given by uh, this um, integral divided by Ts and uh, the integral t minus Ts to t can be written as uh, two components. We can do the integration from 0 to t and then subtract out the integration from 0 to t minus Ts and that becomes easier to implement in a, in a traditional simulation tool. The uh, uh, the second quantity, the zero uh, integral from zero to t minus t s, can once again be uh, implemented using two different ways. Uh, the first method is to just delay the integral um, from zero to t of x of t by a duration of t s, and you get exactly this value, and that is this implementation. Okay. So take x of t, integrate that, so you get this first term, and then delay that by t s, then you get the second term and uh, subtract the delayed version from um, this integration um, then divided by ts is um, equivalent to multiplying by fs that is what is done here and uh, so this would be your instantaneous x of t and the output would be x bar of t uh, that is actually the preferred implementation the other method to implement this uh, second term is take the integral of uh, the delayed version of x of t uh, so take x of t instantaneous quantity, delay it by t s, and then do the integration from 0 to t. Okay, that will be the, uh, the second term of this expression. And uh, that gives us the, the complete CC implementation to be as shown here. Okay. Uh, so the first term is this here, and the second one is uh, x t minus t s. And both of them are integrated from 0 to t. And this is the actual implementation in simulation. Uh, take, take x of t, delay it by t s, take the difference and then do the integration and uh, to do the divide by t s you multiply by f s. Uh, Plex actually has uh, two, um, two CC implementation uh, and those are available under the library control filters. The two types are called as moving average or per periodic average as uh, shown here. Next, uh, let's look at some of the useful properties of the cycle by cycle averaging. The first one is that just like the instantaneous quantities, uh, the Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's, law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, KCL and KVL, they, they are equally valid for CCA quantities as well. So the KCL in an instantaneous sense is that sum of instantaneous currents at a given node is zero, um, taking into account the current directions. Similarly, uh, in an average sense, in a CCA sense as well, the sum of CCA currents entering a node is zero. Similarly, the sum of um, the voltage drops going around a loop, uh, both instantaneously as well as in an average sense, is equal to zero. Okay, that is sigma k vk bar going around a loop is, is zero. And that is uh, fairly uh, easy to prove. So this is the instantaneous KCL. So I1, I2, I3, they are all entering this node. Their sum is equal to zero. That's the basic instantaneous KCL. Now just uh, take the integration of each of uh, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side and divide by Ts. That gives you this expression on the right-hand side and integral of zero is, uh, is zero. And if you look at each of these terms, they are nothing but the so first term is really I1 bar, second is I2 bar, the third is I3 bar. And we've shown that their sum is equal to zero starting from KCL of the instantaneous quantities. Next, uh, let's do an, uh, an example of applying KCL and KVL in a CCA sense uh, in an actual power converter. So once again, this is the basic step-down converter that we have seen. And uh, let's say we want to apply KCL uh, in an average sense in this node X. Okay. So that would be um, the current entering the node is this IL but we want to write the CCA value, so it would be IL bar. They all can be functions of time. Okay. Then this current, should call this as IC, that's the capacitor current, that is uh, leaving the node, so that will be minus IC bar of T. And um, the load current is also leaving the node, so that will be minus IO bar of T. And that is equal to zero. Okay. 
So, so the, basically the average inductive current is the sum of average capacitor current and the average load current. And um, in our later discussions on this step down converter, we will see that that has um, 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 a big significance. Similarly, if you want to do a KVL, and let's do that around this loop Y. So going around this entire loop. So we will write that as, uh, say, starting from this point, we write this as minus VA average minus VA bar uh, plus VL bar. And uh, so this voltage here is the output voltage VO or VO bar. So we'll call this as plus VO bar. And that by KVL equals zero. Okay, then we can also show that the voltage current relationships for the basic um, elements, the R, L, and C, um, in a CCS sense, is exactly same as the relationship valid for instantaneous uh, conditions. So that is uh, for a resistance, instantaneously V is R times I. Similarly, in a CCS sense as well, the average voltage is the resistance times the average current. Um, and that is um, comes from the basic definition. And um, for an inductor, instantaneously VL of T is L D over DT of IL of T. Um, similarly, the cycle by cycle average uh, voltage, VL average, is also L D over DT of the average inductor current, CCA inductor current. And this can also be uh, easily der derived from the basic uh, CCA definition um, just by changing the order of uh, differentiation and integration in the, in the right-hand side expression. And same thing for the capacitor. Instantaneously, IC is CdV over dt. And in a CCA sense as well, the IC bar is CdVc bar over dt. And finally, the derivative of a cycle by cycle average quantity is given by this expression. So, d over dt of x bar of t is the instantaneous x of t minus the x at the, at the time t minus t is the, the difference divided by t is, is the derivative of x bar of t. Then uh, we will conclude this video by looking at uh, some applications where the CC can be applied, where it will be useful, and where it cannot be applied. So first of all, CCA, cycle by cycle average, is valid both during steady state conditions as well as transient conditions. Therefore, it can be used for steady state analysis as well as transient analysis. And especially in a transient analysis or transient simulation, if we use um, um, cycle by cycle average based models, then the simulation times can be um, sometimes orders of magnitude faster compared to simulations using a full-fledged switch model. So it's very useful in that sense. When we come to the analysis of DC, AC or AC, DC converters, we will see that it is very convenient to use phasor analysis for analyzing the fundamental um, quantities in these, uh, in these converters. But phasor analysis is valid for only one frequency, but we will have the switching frequency as well as fundamental frequency. So when we use the um, cycle by cycle averaging, we just saw in an example in this video that it removes the switching frequency and its harmonics, leaving us only the DC component and the fundamental frequency component. So therefore, for a fundamental frequency analysis, we can still use phasor analysis if you deal with only CCA quantities. So that's a very significant advantage. And uh, finally, where CCA cannot be used is uh, whenever you want to study anything to do with switching frequency effect, like whether it is um, looking at the switching frequency ripple in um, currents and voltages, or trying to determine the uh, switch ratings, um, or any uh, anything related to the uh, switching level detail, those cannot be studied using CCA models, because the process of averaging completely removes all the switching frequency related uh, effects.